Let's now consider the following problem. Let's say we have a person class and we have attribute name and also we got spouse. You can see uh, the type of that is actually a reference type. Specifically, it's a class from our customized Java project. That's, that's, uh, that's something we assume. It's not really coming from the Java library API class, but it's a class that we created our own. So that's gonna be a reference type. So spouse is going to be a single value attributes that will store at a runtime the address of some person objects over here to be more precise. And then we got a constructor over here, which will just initialize the name of the person object. Okay, that's the one we're given for the problem. How do you implement a mutator method, which is going to uh, modify the spouse attribute specifically? That's what we intend to do. A method called marry over here, which will marry the current person objects or the context objects to an input person object. For example, let's say if you got uh, two person, let's say you got Jim, you got Elsa. You can say Jim dot marry and then put Elsa as an input argument. In that case, you're, uh, you're trying to marry the two uh, persons to, together. Of course, given that both persons are single, right? The, let's just uh, make sure it correspond to the real world. All right, so that's uh, really the method I would like you uh, to try. Without looking at the solution in the next slides, it will be a very good practice for you. You can, you can try number one, to declare this mutated method yourself, and then to put the input arguments, uh, input parameter of the right type, and then to really implement it. You also want to consider the case where if either of the person is not a single person, in which case, of course, they cannot really get married to another person before they got divorced, right? Uh, you can think about the structure for this method here, and it will require some uh, more advanced use for the disk keyword, which we didn't talk about previously, right? Okay, pause the video and think about it. Assuming that you have thought about it, let's now go over the solution quickly, okay? So the solution looks something like this. So we got this uh, mutator method returning void, and it's called married. And the input parameter is just another reference type. Remember, we spoke about the reference type uh, can be either return type, can be parameter type, it can also be attribute type, right? This is the another example for parameter type. And we are simply saying either uh, either the context object spouse is not equal to null, right? So that means the context object is not a single person, or if uh, the input uh, the input argument the parameter other the other person the other person's spouse is actually not equal to null, meaning that the other person we are trying to marry to uh, is not a single person. Either either of the case, that's why we are trying to put disjunction. If either the context object is not single, or if the other object is not single, in that case, there should be some kind of an error. Uh, status, status message you can set. You can maybe create another string attributes for the person uh, person class, and then you can set the uh, status message to be either uh, maybe error or maybe to whatever error message you like. Pretty much like the vending machine that we did for your lab number five. I'll leave that part as, a, uh, as an exercise for you. Otherwise, remember the Morgan. What does it really mean when we go to the else part? I'll, I'll speak about this, maybe illustrate together. And then we have to see exactly how to visualize this. That would be quite important. All right, we already, so, uh, we already spoke about, we actually got a uh, name, sorry. We actually got this attribute name, and also we got attribute spouse over here. Right again, it's really a single, single value reference type. And we actually got constructor over here, that's easy. So now we are talking about this particular Mary method over here, all right? And then we got the input parameter over here, simply just other over here, right? And then uh, we say that it will be an error if either the current object is not single, which means uh, their spouse is actually pointing to some valid person objects, or the input argument uh, person objects is not single, right? So what does it really mean for the else part? Let's do some very quick uh, reminder about the Morgan. Uh, let's now put it here. So when we actually go to the else part, so what does that really mean? So when we get to the else part, so that would mean, uh, so the negation of this particular disjunction over here. So what would that be? It would be this, the spouse, equals equals null, right? It's going to be the negation of negation. So it's gonna be double negation, which would be equal, equal. And, right, it's gonna, we're gonna turn this junction into conjunction. And then other 
dot spells equals equals null. So when we actually get to the else part over here, that means we know that uh, this uh, the context object is a single person, and also the other parameter objects is also a single person. Their spouses are simply just null, right? And then in that case, what we will do is we're going to say this that spouse is assigned to other. That one's easy. And also other that spouse is assigned to this. So this is really the important parts, which you haven't seen. So that's what I call the more advanced use uh, of the uh, this keyword. So let me put it there. So you can see this over here. All right, that's about the definition for the template. Uh, but now let's see exactly how things will be in, uh, will be visualized, uh, can be visualized at the runtime. Before that, let me show you one more point that's in the slides. We say that, let's say we want to call Jim Mary Elsa. You can see Jim over here is the context objects. And also Elsa over here is the input arguments, right? So now let's see exactly how the uh, template definition is going to be instantiated with this particular context object and also input arguments. You will see the uh, you will see the detail in the slides, but let me just illustrate that quickly uh, to show you. And also, we're going to use this example here to uh, show you more example about dot notation. Okay, that's what we'll see. Let's now take a look uh, here. So we are basically trying to initialize. Uh, we are trying to create two person objects. So the first one will be Jin. So basically, Jin is uh, stores the address of a person object over here, which has two attributes. So this will be person. And we got two attributes for the person. One will be the name. I'll just say N for short. And also S for spouse, right? And uh, the name is going to be Jin. Remember, string is also reference type. So that means name is going to point to some string objects, which will be Jin, right? That'll be the accurate way of uh, of uh, visualizing it. And we got another one over here. Uh, let's say here we got another person here. It will be Elsa, right? So let's put it uh, put it here. And Elsa is actually stored the address of another person object over here. And then let's now write it down quickly. And then uh, we got two attributes for the person. We got N for name, S for spouse, and the name will be Elsa. So it would be a reference value. So store us. Uh, it will store the address of some string, Elsa. Okay, you can see at the moment. I can be more precise over here. At the moment, the spouse for Elsa is simply now in the beginning, right? Remember, you can uh, you can see from the uh, constructor over here. Since we do not explicitly initialize the spouse attributes, so that means it will keep its default value automatically. And we spoke about the default value for reference type, which will be just null. Okay, so that means it's pointing to just null. And then similarly uh, for Jin, which we created previously, the spouse will also be just null. All right, let's now take a look at how we can trace this particular uh, line over here. Right, so we are calling the Mary uh, method over here. But let's now be clear about uh, what the context object is and what the argument object is. Let's now be clear. Let me show this to you. You can see Jin basically is the context object that we just created, and also uh, Elsa will be uh, the input argument object that we created secondly, right over here. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this method Mary over here, and every occurrence of this is going to be replaced by Jim, right? So now let's try that. Every occurrence of this is going to be replaced by Jim. So and this over here will be Jim, and every occurrence of uh, other the input parameter will be replaced by the argument Elsa, right? So other is going to be Elsa. Over here, and also other will be Elsa over here, and other also will be Elsa, and also other over here will be Elsa, right? You can just some substitution you have to do. And what's exactly the uh, branching condition we are checking? Let's write this down uh, precisely, right? So you can see exactly how to correspond it to the diagram. So for this part here, it's going to be Jim the spouse, right? You can see Jim dot spouse not equal to null or 
Elsa, the spouse, not equal to now. Let's、uh, write it down. It's going to be Jim, dot, spouse, not equal to, no. Disjunction or Elsa, dot, spouse, not equal to, no. Right? We can easily see that. Jim, the spouse. Jim, dot, spouse. Definitely, definitely is no. No, not equal to no would be false. Right? False. And also Elsa dot Elsa dot spouse spouse over here pointing to now now not equal to now will also be false. So we actually get false and false, right? So we actually get false and also false. So eventually we're going to get false for this particular disjunction. Right? That means we're going to simply bypass this part over here, and then we're going to execute the else part over here. And what's the else part? Let's now write it down. So we're actually going to have、uh, Jim the spouse is assigned to Elsa. Elsa the spouse is assigned to Jim. Okay, I forgot to actually replace this particular occurrence by Jim. I forgot, right? Every occurrence should be replaced by the context objects Jim over here. And、right, let me write down this particular assignment over here. So we got Jim is assigned to Elsa. Follow,、uh, and also semicolon, of course, and and then we got Elsa is assigned to. Oh,、uh, Elsa is assigned to Jim, right? All right, you can see Jim is as.、Uh, oh, sorry, Jim the spouse. I beg your pardon. Actually, you shouldn't make this mistake. But let me just re let me rewrite it quickly. Okay. Let me、uh, just write this down. Okay, I'll, I'll, I will highlight it a little later. Jim the spouse. Jim the spouse is assigned to Elsa, and also Elsa the spouse is assigned to Jim. And then, okay, sorry about the mistake I made. And then you can see here the context object Jim is over here, right? Context object Jim, and then the argument object Elsa over here. Elsa and Elsa. All right. Let's execute these two lines. Let's see、uh, what what's going to happen. Jim the spouse. Jim the spouse is going to copy the address that is stored in Elsa. Elsa stored the address of this particular object. Right. So that means after that, Jim the spouse is now going to point to this particular object. That's what's going to happen here. Right. Let's write it down. So what's going to happen is after this, Jim the spouse rather than pointing to now. It's now going to point to Elsa objects. Similarly, Elsa the spouse, Elsa the spouse, is assigned to the address that is stored in Jim. Jim stores the address of this particular object. So after that, so spouse over here for Elsa is now going to point back to Jim as well. So they are spouse of each other. Okay, let's now write it down.、Uh, so what's going to happen is. Uh, this part over here.、Uh, what might be the best way? So rather than pointing to here, it's now going to point to the gym object over here, right? So hopefully you can see that, right? It's not really. Uh, in some way, it's circular. You can see. You can definitely go for gym dot spouse, which will go to over here, and this is pointing to Elsa. You can do another dot spouse. Which will actually go back to Jim. So that's really the fun part about the、uh, uh, the dot notation. I'll just give you one example, and then we can do some exercise on the slides. If you try to do the following, if you say Jim dot spouse dot spouse, realistically, this must be the person, the context object itself, right? Your spouse's spouse must be yourself, basically. Well, if that's not yourself, that's not may not be、uh, what's really corresponding to reality. So anyway, so that's、uh, something we assume in just、uh, normal life. So when we say Jim the spouse, Jim the spouse over here is pointing to this particular object over here, and then when we say dot spouse again, so dot spouse again is pointing back to this particular object, which is just the Jim, which is a context object. Okay, so hopefully you understand this particular syntax over here, and then let's do a little bit exercise、uh, on the slides, and then I will refer back to this diagram over here. 
All right, let's go back to uh, this slide here. And then that's exactly the replacement I did, right? Okay, you can refer to it. Let's do some quick, uh, some quick exercise on the dot notation, okay? And we spoke about before, whenever you say something dot something, the left-hand side is really the context objects, but it can be more complicated than the variable. It can be, for example, you can see eventually we are saying something dot spells over here, and this particular expression over here is really the context objects, right? Let me write it down. You can think about this part over here is really the context object, right? You don't forget you have a dot over here. So this is a context object. And the context object does not really need to be just a single variable, right? It can be maybe uh, some uh, dot notation itself, gym.spouse, right? It can be uh, as many dots as you like, as long as they, they make sense. It's really some phenomenon, very natural, uh, nat uh, some natural phenomenon, natural consequence of OOP because you can always uh, look up the address and go to another object, and then look up the address go and go to another object, right? Can, the lookup process can be simply uh, uh, ongoing. Oh, it can be a path, basically, to uh, that brings you to another object. For example, this path over here, Jim does spouse bring us to this particular object. And once you get to this object here, treat that as a context object when you say dot spouse. So this object dot spouse is actually going to go to just another object over here, which happens to be just this initial context object, right? Okay, so that's the uh, person class that we spoke about. Let's make the following assumption. Let's say for the private name, we got an accessor called name, okay? And for the private spouse attribute, let's say we got and a public accessor called spouse, which will uh, which will return the spouse, uh, which will return the person objects, and this name will return the screen objects, of course. Okay, let's say we got uh, one uh, person objects over here called Jim. Okay, let's say Jim Davis over here. Let's say uh, so. How do we inquire about Jim's name? Let's warm up. How do you get Jim's name? Well, if I want to get Jim Jim object, uh, want to get its name, you can say Jim dot name. Right? This one's easy, right? Jim dot, and then go to this object here, and then you want to access the name. So we can just call the, uh, let's say, all the answers should be phrased in terms of the uh, uh, accessor method that we assume. In that case, Jim dot name. All right? What about the second one? What about Jim's spouse's name? For example, in this case, we know Jim the spouse over here is referring to Elsa over here. How do we find out Elsa's name? Alice's name would be just another dot name, right? You can think about Jim that spells over here is referring to Elsa. Elsa object over here. We can either say we can either say the name of Elsa or the spouse of Elsa, right? What we showed you before is the a spouse of Elsa. But now we want to get the name of Elsa. Why right? just say dot name? Okay, like that. Like that. You can see Jim the spells over here. This uh, expression I I'm highlighting over here, this will be the context objects for this particular name uh, method call, right? Pretty much like I say Jim that spells over here is the context object for the spells uh, call over here, right? All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's say this, but what if uh, Jim is actually single, right? Let's say Jim that spells equals equals null, right? Hypothetically, hypothetically, okay? Can we just temporarily assume, just temporarily, I'm going to delete this line just for now, okay? Let's say Jim has no spouse at the moment. Let's say just for now, okay? So we still got no object over here. Let's just go back to the, the diagram where both Jim and Elsa are simply just uh, single. Let's say before they, uh, let's uh, roll back to the time where they were both single. I'm going to undo this uh, in just a moment, okay? Let's say, uh, let's assume the following structure, okay? So calling Jim that spells that name will cause null pointer exception. But why? Jim that spells over here. You can let, uh, try to see. Uh, Jim that spells. Jim. Jim dot spells is actually pointing to null. And then if you try to call the dot name over here, it's pretty much similar to calling the get payment due on one of the elements in the facilities array. Right in the in your in your, your week number eight uh, Java tutorial videos, so it's going to give you null pointer exception. 
All right, so you can see gym.spouse over here is actually null. And you cannot invoke any method on a context object that's actually equal to null. So that will give you null pointer exception. Right? It's, uh, it's actually not the first time we're actually seeing this error here. You have to be well aware of this issue here. Okay, and uh, let's have a question here. Let's assume that Jim is not single. All right, so let me simply undo back to uh, after Jim and Elsa have married to each other. Let's just go, uh, go there. Okay, good. So that's a diagram here. Let's say Jim is not single. And then, so that means Jim does spouse is not equal to null, right? You can easily check this, right? Jim does spouse is really uh, referring to Jim does spouse, referring to this field over here, is indeed pointing to some object over here. So that's why it's not null. So uh, this expression over here should be true. And the next one, and let's say the ma uh, the marriage over here is mutual. So Jim is uh, Jim's spouse is uh, Elsa. Elsa's spouse is Jim. All right. You can see Jim that spouse is spouse not equal to now, right? That's how we uh, express that. Let's try this. Jim that spouse spouse. Okay. Jim dot spouse dot spouse, which will go back to this particular object, of course, that one is not now. All right, that's uh, very, very easy to visualize. So now, final question: What does Jim the spouse the spouse the name really mean? If you got a diagram with you, so this one should be rather easy, right? Let's try that. Let me copy down this question over here on the uh, iPad, and then we'll look at it. Uh, look at this last one together. Uh, let me just write it down. You can take a look over here. So we say Jim the spouse the spouse dot name. So what would that be, right? Let's now take a look. I put it here, over here. You can see that. Let's go one by one. When I say Jim, uh, let me just do this. Let me use some uh, color over here. When I say Jim. I'm really talking about this particular uh, reference variable. When I say dot, I'm now referring to this object over here, the arrow, and then spouse. I'm really trying to access this particular spouse, which will point to this particular object over here, right? And then uh, the dot basically just go to that particular spouse. And then I want to get access to the spouse of that, which will be uh, this field over here. And then when I say dot again, so that means I'm actually going through the arrow over here again, back to this particular object here. And now, what's the name of this object over here? Well, apparently the name of that object here is Jim. The name over there will just be Jim, right? So the answer for that exercise will be Jim that name, basically the name of Jim. All right, so you can see, uh, can, you can play with the dot notation here. It's actually a very interesting uh, operator to really have. And to really master the use of the dot notation, you have to know very well the object structure that you're ma manipulating. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to give you one more example about how to manipulate the dot notation using maybe multiple classes together rather than just a single class.